All the way through my toddlers and, and my adolescence, uh, I had the Holy Scriptures being read and taught to me. From a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And that along with Romans 1.16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation that everyone believeth, the Jew first and also to the Greek. Uh, that's, uh, those two verses were what prompted me to call on the name of the Lord when I was about nine or ten years old after a tragic accident, and I received Christ as my Savior. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Uh, that's all scripture is given by inspiration. Now there are those, uh, many even in the Christian realm, that say, well, the original manuscripts in the Mesoratic, or in any of the Hebrew texts, in any of the Greek texts, that's all, you know, that was verbally inspired. But we don't have that today. So what do you believe? <laughs> we take the book that God gave us and we believe it and we use it. Uh, we have all these things. Uh, God has preserved uh, good translations, uh, in, especially in the English language, but because it's become the world religion. Uh, it was Greek back in the Jesus day, uh, but now it's English, and so many places understand English and have been taught English, uh, but we have God's preserved word, and this is scripture that I hold right here. I believe it is God's inspired scripture that he has given to mankind. And now many, many uh, languages have had scripture from the received texts in the Masoretic, uh, Masoretic uh, Hebrew uh, that uh, are, are in their language. Uh, yet there's thousands that don't have any. You use the word of God. Whatever you have, you use that and tell people and use it for God's glory. <clears throat> So all these things are going to happen. All these things are coming, and these are warnings. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Uh, it's going to get worse, folks. You think it's bad now. Uh, like they always said, well, you ain't seen anything yet. <laughs> uh, but the Lord's got it under control, and we can walk with him in safety and, and in love and in uh, that mercy and grace that covers us and his protection of the days of our life, if that's what we desire. Uh, look at chapter four there. That's where uh, Paul is encouraging Timothy to just preach the word and go out and uh, no matter whether it's the right season or whether it's good time to people wanna hear you or not, just go and do it. Uh, verse 3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Uh, we have that happening in churches all across America and churches in many countries of the world. Uh, Europe and England, Great Britain uh, have long gone that way to where they no longer have uh, any teaching of the truth to speak of. They have people that are all just want to hear whatever the thing is that is the thing to be heard, you know, today in the world. And that's not the thing. God wants you to hear his word. God wants you to know what he says, not what the world says. The world will tell you a bunch of lies and a bunch of junk that you don't need to hear or believe. And you shouldn't believe. And so that's what we're talking about when we look at the apologetics, the things that we don't need to hear, things that we uh, should not, uh, we should stay away from. <clears throat> now, in uh, chapter, 2 Peter, chapter 2, Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter two and look at the beginning verse there again. <clears throat> Talking about what's going to be in the last days, how things are going to go. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you 
who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow uh, their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. There are many people that claim to be Christians and will profess Christianity, and yet they will condemn King James Bible believers. They'll say, oh, you're a cult. Listen, we're not worshiping the book, we're worshiping God. He gave us his word, and that's how we know to worship him. Uh, uh, so those things come about. Well, uh, God, let God be true and every man a liar. I mean, that's the way it is. Just God's truth is here. Uh, but there are going to be many following their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. God's word, the way of truth, is evil spoken of. Oh no, you just have to do this. You need to join this church, join that church. You need to be, no you don't. You need to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Repent of your sins and realize that God is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews says that. And so we need to trust in God. Realize that. Uh, look at chapter 3. In chapter 3, we see there, uh, beginning in verse uh, 3, again a reminder here in this epistle, stirring up their ways of remembrance, uh, that ye, verse 2, ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Uh, the remembrance, by way of remembrance, saying, uh, looking at it over and over again, uh, just seeing it constantly. You say, well, I just heard that last week. Well, I just heard that. Listen, you just need to hear it again, and you need to take it to heart, make sure that it's doing the work God wants it to do. Verse 3 says, knowing this, first that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts and how we have scoffers today. Uh, in our apologetics course that we'll be doing, we'll be seeing some of the scoffers and some of the awful things that they have said against the Bible and against God's word. Uh, and many people follow these people. In fact, I see uh, one of the acclaimed Christian scholars, C.S. Lewis, uh, I just saw a thing from about him again, and, and many denominations are exalting him like he's a great man. I don't even think the guy was saved personally from his own testimonies. Uh, but just uh, realize that men are following men. We need to follow God and what he says. Stay away from these uh, soothsayers, gainsayers, as the, uh, the Bible calls them. And, Verse, uh, let's see, chapter 3 there now. <clears throat> Walking after their own lust, scoffers. And they're saying, where is the promise of his coming? Ah, <laughs> oh, nothing's changed. These people have been talking about the rapture coming. At that. Well, why is the government now <laughs> caught up with that thing? I've seen a number of articles about that NASA says there's going to be a strange catching away. The aliens are going to come and take a whole group of people out of the earth. Well... I think it comes out of the King James Bible, personally, out of the old the Bibles that we have, God's Word. Yes, it is going to happen, uh, but why even would the government be saying that? Uh, so, where is the promise of His coming? Uh, they don't want to acknowledge that it's happening, but it is going to happen. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. <laughs> For this, they are willingly ignorant. Uh, willingly ignorant. Uh, I like the one, I don't remember which, who it is, but I've listened to, and he always says, that means dumb on purpose. <laughs> Just plain dumb on purpose. Willingly ignorant, uh, because you want to believe that. And I, I always think of that, and I always think, yeah, that, that's true. 
For this they are willingly ignorant that by the word of God the heavens were of old. God made the heaven, the earth standing out of the water in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water. Oh, that was a local flood, wasn't it? <laughs> See how easy it is for people to misuse the scripture? Overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. God's word is keeping this earth the way it is now. No, man's not going to destroy it. If he does, it's going to be the opposite way, but he's not going to be the one to destroy it. Uh, God is going to uh, uh, burn it up. It's going to be coming. It's reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So I guess in that sense, the ungodly men are causing it. Uh, but this thing about the, the climate control, listen, God controls the climate. Man isn't going to. And I see all these different experiments by billionaires that are uh, putting all this money into uh, controlling the climate. I mean, they've gone into controlling the food and now they want to control the climate too. And uh, how, many, how many of the prophets of theirs have said that the earth was going, if we didn't stop global warming, which... I don't even get into it, but uh, God is in control of that, and man isn't going to stop it if it is global warming. And maybe it's for the good. I mean, there was a time of global warming before all these hydrocarbons were being put into the air by man, where the ice age, the glaciers melted off in North America. Did man cause that? Uh, God took care of that, but he warmed the climate up so that this would happen. And he cools the climate down and he wants things to be cooled down. And it's a cycle that goes on all the time as God controls the thermostat on this earth. And so we don't go into those, those things as far as getting involved politically with them. But that's just the way it is. And so they don't know that this world is reserved under the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So the end time warnings, they're there. But we'll have scoffers that are going to scoff at all this. What do we do? Believe the word of God. Take God at his word. Uh, he's true and faithful. We can rely on him. Amen. And so we'll just take him at his word. Uh, just a few pages over there you'll find the book of Jude. And we should just read that whole thing. But let's just go to verse 3 there. Beloved. When I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. We need to earnestly contend for that faith that was given to the saints uh, through the apostles and the prophets and God's word that he has completed and given to us. Uh, contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Uh, why should you do that? How do you do that? Uh, you talk to the gainsayers, the ones that would, the corruptors and the unbelievers, uh, and you show them why they are wrong, why they are not trusting God's word and they are trusting man's word. Uh, verse 4 says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we'll be seeing some of those men in the statements that have been made and that are used in our uh, public schools and colleges and universities today to destroy God's word by simple statements that some of these deceivers and these ungodly men have made and has become the creed of the world. Uh, so we'll be looking at more of that also. Look at uh, verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. And so we have people that are just... Uh, completely being corrupted in the world uh, by themselves here. And he's using that in relation to uh, Michael the archangel contending with the devil over the body of Moses. 
And again, that's a good place to realize you don't take on the devil yourself. You let the Lord handle the devil. And the archangel didn't take on the devil. The devil said, the Lord rebuke thee. And that's what we need to be careful about doing too. I mean, you see all these uh, <clears throat> religions and these uh, quote prophets that they say they have and these different uh, religions around uh, the country and around the world and they and, and they'll stand up in services and they'll start screaming and hollering, you know, I rebuke you, devil. And you better be careful. You better let God do that. That's not your place. You're not going to rebuke the devil. Uh, you let God take care of him. He made him and he's the most powerful being that God made apparently. Uh, you don't want to mess with him. Okay, just stay with the Lord and the Lord will take care of him. The Lord will take care of him through the battles like we saw there in Joshua and Judges and, and Samuel and so forth. And he'll take care of the battles in your life if you'll just let him and walk with him. <clears throat> Look also there at uh, verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Uh, it's going to happen. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Second advent uh, to execute. What's he coming for? What's he bringing his saints along with him for? To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against God, against him. Uh, the judgment's going to take place. And it's a, for ungodly. How much, I, I love that verse. All these ungodly things. Uh, listen, we have all kinds of ungodly things around us in the world. Don't forget God overrides ungodliness. And they will have their due. Uh, they've, what have they done with these things? They, what are all these things that we talk about uh, that are wicked and wrong? Uh, what are they? Why, they're all spoken against God. That's what that verse says. Uh, these people aren't against you. They're against God. They're only against you as man can be to get, stop you from letting people know about God. And about letting people know about the truth of God. And so stand for the things of God, stand for the truth of God. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's person and aberration because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, uh, sensual, having not the spirit. Uh, they're just earthly. They're lost in the senses of mankind and they will not turn to God. And so those are the ones uh, the, that we are against, that are against God, and they will be against you. They're mockers, and it's in the last times. Folks, it's in the last time. There's no question about that. Now, whether the last times, uh, Paul and Peter and James and John, all of them thought they were in the last times also, even though the Lord said, well, it's not, I can't tell you when I'm coming back, but uh, the Father knows, and he'll do it right on schedule. He'll do it right when you're supposed to. So they were preaching that he's coming back then. And so now people mock about that and say, see, he's not really coming back. Been 2,000 years and he hasn't come back. Where's your faith? <laughs> Glad you asked. Right here's my faith. God says it. It's going to happen. Just like all of his other uh, prophecies have come true, the prophecies about his uh, birth, his suffering, his resurrection, all these things have come true, and so will the return and the catching up of the saints and the things, the second advent, the judgment of God. Uh, all these things will happen. Uh, don't be a mocker and a scoffer at these things. Again, Matthew uh, 24 is where the Lord Jesus Christ, his disciples had asked him, uh, 
Lord, what's going to be the signs of these times? When, when's this really going to happen? And so he's answering them here in Matthew 24. And he says, let's begin in verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming, the end of the world? Uh, this is in Matthew 24. Now verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And that's what we say today. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. We actually have people walking around in our country that say they're Jesus Christ, in case you didn't know that. Um, we have one in our local community that says he's one of the two, uh, two prophets of Revelation. Uh, so uh, be careful. He believes it from what he's written and what he's said. I, uh, and people that know him, I believe he's very real in what he believes. That's no different than all the rest of the woke generation, what they believe, whatever's in their mind is what they believe, and they don't care about any facts or what the Bible says. Now this guy claims to be a Bible believer, and he claims to be a Christian. Uh, so judge him by the word, amen? Uh, ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, and the end is not yet. Oh, what's, what's Putin going to do? What's a, President Biden going to do? I don't care. It's in God's hands, okay? Uh, I'm just going to stick with the Lord and let him take care of those things. Uh, there will be wars and rumors of wars. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Boy, are we starting to get, well, I, here about four years ago, I did a message just on then the nations of the world that were having extreme famines and pestilence. And over the, during, uh, even during COVID, we had the whole uh, Mideast was being destroyed by insects, by uh, the locusts and the different, uh, flying insects, destroying all their crops and things. Uh, all these are the beginning of sorrows. <laughs> it's not here yet, that's just the start. <laughs> they shall, uh, then shall they deliver you up and be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be handed of all nations, uh, hated of all nations for my name's sake. Uh, Christians are becoming hated by all nations for Christ's name's sake. If you stand, you'll be hated by the nations. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. It will grow cold. And so we see all these warnings that, from the Bible. The end time warnings. Uh, where are you at? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Are you walking with him? Are you believing him, taking him at his word? Uh, that's, the, that's the whole uh, heart of the Christian. I mean, that's our, how wonderful to know God's word and to take him at his word and believe it and walk with him. And so we trust God in all things. Trust him with our life. If, we, if you can trust him with something as big as your salvation, you can trust him with the little things too. Uh, he loves to take care of those things. So turn to him with all your heart and love him like you're supposed to. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for all the warnings that we see. Give it in your word, Lord. Help us to take heed, Lord, and not be deceived. It's so easy. Just as the devil deceived Eve in the garden, the serpent came to her, and so she was deceived. And Father, it can happen today. So. Uh, Lord, you keep us by your grace, and thank you for saving us eternally so that we cannot be taken away from you. Uh, Father, thank you again uh, for this the day that you've given us with your word that you've given us and the great songs to help us remember and, and to praise your name. Father, And we just ask your blessing upon these people here as they go today. And Father, we ask that you would Bless this uh, little lighthouse you've put here and continue to use it for your glory till you come again. Lord, uh, take care of uh, George Ann and uh, whatever her case is with Mike there, Viscombs, Lord, and, and get them back on the road for your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I have a home.
Let's sing about my home, my home sweet home, number 154, 154 in the All-American. If you can stand, we will sing this. bless you. I hope you're planning on being there soon and uh, keep on doing what you're supposed to be doing here and uh, let's just live for the Lord. Amen. Love him with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. And God bless you and we'll have a fellowship here if you're able to stay. If not, we understand. You're dismissed.